Hello everybody, welcome to another video, and today I want to talk a little bit about something that I thought might be interesting for those of you that have started playing the game in the recent years and you may have never experienced this. And I'm of course talking about void keys or tower keys, whatever you want to call them. This is something that we as veterans, <laughs> veterans, uh, reminisce about and it's something that we remember very fondly. Because you see, back in the day, primed items weren't farmed via relics, you would farm them in void towers instead. It's what the entirety of void was for, this wasn't just another region on the star chart that you would go to and do some exterminating captures, no no no. If you wanted to go into the void, you had to have a key for one of the towers. The way the keys worked is fairly similar to relics, there were four tiers of them, tier 1, 2, 3 and 4, which are basically Lith, Meso, Neo and Axie, and there was a key for every kind of mission, so there were keys for sabotage, survival, defense, interception, that kind of stuff, so if you got a key, it was for example a tier 2 sabotage key, they would unlock a tier 2 or a Meso sabotage mission in the void. And once you used it to enter the mission, the key was gone. Now these keys used to drop in pretty much the same places where relics drop nowadays, so if nowadays you're doing a high level mission and you're getting Axie relics, you'd be getting Tower 4 keys instead. Now this tower system, or key system, was not better than the relic system. The relic system is a lot better because it's less repetitive and you have a lot more options when it comes to farming the actual primed items. Because the loot from towers wasn't flexible at all, if for example you wanted to get Ash Prime Neuroptics, you would have to get it from, let's just say, Tower 4 Survival, Rotation B. So if you wanted to get it, you had to do Survival until your eyes bled. But there were also some benefits here, because endless keys, for example, were actually endless. Unlike nowadays, where when you do, let's just say, survival again, you have to put in a different relic every five minutes, whereas with the tower keys, when you unlocked a survival mission, you could stay in that mission until you either failed or left. This is why back in those days endurance runs were a big deal, because the longer you could stay in one of these endless missions, the more value you got out of your one key. I specifically remember being ecstatic when I finished my Necros belt and I got my Amprex and I was able to stay in tier 1 survivals on my own for like hour, maybe two hours at a time. It actually led to me using a wider variety of Warframes, whereas nowadays I mostly focus on tanks, but back in the day I for example was a big Loki player, because his irradiating disarm was awesome for defense, if you were to combine it with like a bubble from Frost and you would have Trinity for energy vampire and then a DPS frame on top of that, you were set for like 50, 70, even more waves. And this all by the way was mostly before nullifiers, so you could just go all out with abilities. Then in survival I used to play a lot of Necros, which was mind numbing, because back in those days desecrate wasn't a toggle, so you had to press it every time you wanted to desecrate, so you would sit there and go desecrate, 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 desecrate for like an hour or two, which was the worst. Or I would actually play a Vauban as well, because one of the easiest ways to do survival back in those days was actually to camp one of those pipes in a room so you could just throw vortex into the entrance and then just shell it with AoE. And with this survival setup you would have Oban of course to throw the vortexes, and then you would have Necros for Desecrate so that you would get more passive life support drops from the enemies. You would also have Trinity for energy vampire which was very important otherwise you just wouldn't have enough energy for the vortexes. And the final spot was usually Loki because a lot of the time you would just get unlucky with life support drops even with the Desecrate so someone would have to go out and activate the capsules. So you would use a Loki who would sneak past the enemies in stealth to activate the capsules and then come back. Now there were of course some like really degenerate things as well, I specifically remember like the reason why Mirage's OT, like the disco ball thing, I forgot the name of it, has a line of sight now, is because she completely broke interception and it led to like the most boring playstyle there ever was. I've only seen it done once just to see what it looks like and it actually got removed few days after I did it. The idea there was that you would go into Tower 4 Interception, each person would pick one spot, right, one of the points, and you would have Mirage that was built for maximum range and efficiency standing in the middle of the tile set, spamming her OT and immediately detonating it which would stunlock all the enemies in their spawning room so you would never actually fight anything. It was the most boring thing ever because everyone was basically AFK, even the Mirage player just had to make a macro and they could go AFK as well. But by far my favorite memory from the Voidkey era was actually farming ducats. More specifically, farming ducats in Sabotage. This is basically the reason why a lot of old school players know the Void like the back of their hand. 
Because you see, Void Sabotage was the most efficient void mission for farming prime parts. And that's because those hidden caches that you have in Sabotage, right, each Sabotage has three hidden caches, would drop prime parts as well. It was also by far the most popular tower mission to do key sharing runs on, because only your key would be consumed when you enter that mission, even if you had a full party. So if you made a group of four people, where every person had a Tower 4 Sabotage key, everyone could do a Tier 4 Sabotage four times, which go to a ton of primed parts which could either translate into equipment or decades in a very short amount of time, so getting a tower 4 sabotage key was just awesome. Now the reason why it was so fast is because everyone sort of agreed to kind of like this unwritten strategy where the key holder or at least one person, didn't really matter who it was, would bomb rush the mission objective and do that while the other people were scouring all the rooms in the void looking for those caches. It was just an awesome way of getting ducked super fast, which is kind of funny because back in those days, or at least in the beginning of this, Barrow had bugger all on him, he would like bring five items at a time. It was still really cool though, it was basically like if you didn't get enough prime parts from like your endless stuff, so survival, defense, interception, that kind of stuff, you could quickly jump into sabotage and get a ton of ducats very quickly. The main issue with the system was as time went on and more and more stuff was added into the game, the drop tables got more and more bloated and it became harder and harder to actually target farm specific items which then led to repetition as you had to do the missions over and over and over again because if for example you'd be farming something that has like a 5% chance to drop on rotation C in tower 4 survival. So you would first have to go out and farm the key on the star chart and then you would have to get a group that would farm the mission with you and then have a 5% chance that you get it every 20 minutes. Yeah, farming certain items was not a joke. And that's ultimately why they scrapped that system and replaced it with relics, because relics are far more focused, you only have a set amount of items per relic and you can upgrade the relic or not upgrade it to focus towards a specific item even more, and you can open that relic in a variety of tile sets and a variety of different mission types, you're not just farming tower 4 survival in the void for weeks. So yeah, the old tower system was just nowhere near as good as the new relic system. It is so much easier to farm stuff nowadays. Like every time people complain about farming something from relics, I'm just like, oh, you damn whippersnappers back in my day, right? But there were some things that I feel were better about it. For one, it leaned far more into the co-op side of things. Nowadays, it doesn't really matter if you run like a five minute survival or a 10 minute survival or you do a capture. It just doesn't matter. Whereas with the tower system you were kind of incentivized to get better gear because the better gear you got the longer you could stay in your endless missions and the more value you would get out of your endless keys. So both systems definitely had their ups and downs but I must say the relic system is far better than the old tower system. Even though I remember it very fondly. And I kind of miss doing stuff in the void which is why I usually record in the void just you know to have something to do there. But anyway, I think I've been rambling for long enough, so I thank you very much for watching as always, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.